All right. We are still going to give the, the 10 minute uh, wait in here. Um, I'm going to give it a little bit of a different spiel this time, but we still have all the links in all the descriptions and stuff. Um, we'll give it 10 minutes just because I know it's going to take time for people to come in. And then I'll explain what the differences are in this kind of class. Number one, I do recommend all of you, um, before we get started, I'm going to say it again. I do recommend uh, that everyone either join the Discord or um, we did send out an email blast about these streams for those of you who want it. Uh, the Discord channel, we do have a um, specific location for... There's only two assets you technically need for the other two uh, follow-up streams. Hey, everybody. Welcome in. I'm giving the, I'm giving the beginning spiel. I'm going to do it again. Um, but there are going to be some assets for these for the following streams, the part two and part three, that um, you don't have to have them, but you can use them. It makes it a little bit easier if you want to follow along exactly with what I'm doing. Um, so join the Discord as well as... Uh, we will be sending out email blasts, kind of reminding people of these streams and also social media. If I actually remember to tell everybody at the time, we always stream at noon. <laughs> at noon, <laughs> noon in like LA time. Um, so we're gonna wait a little bit. I'm going to be doing the same garment twice. That's the, gonna be the difference here, is it is simple, but I'm gonna go slow. And you've, a lot of you who are aware of these streams, um, I'm generally working with assets that are available. Uh, Sean, the Discord link is actually in the YouTube description. If you open the description, it's right there and you can click it. Um, double checks to make sure that it, it saved that setting. <laughs> you don't need anything right now. This stream, you just need Marvelous Designer. That's all you're gonna need. And I mean, I guess a mouse and a functioning computer if you wanna follow along. I shall teach you all. Oh yeah, so what I was doing, what I was saying uh, was, let me make sure that link is in here. Yes, the link is in the description. Everybody here, the link is in the description of the video and it's in the bio of the Twitch channel. Um, you guys tend to get bored whenever I post them in, in the chats. It's already in the, in the description and it's linked on our YouTube channel too. So it's, it's everywhere. So in the past, you've seen me do a lot of these. Yes. Uh, I'll answer the question in a second. In the past, you've seen me do a lot of these tutorials where I'm manipulating existing assets. Like you have kind of basically the shirt we're going to be making today, but you can do use and apply these same concepts to an avatar that is not a marvelous designer based avatar. Um, so just keep that part in mind. Um, so we'll be making everything from scratch today. Uh, basically, this is a new update version of my older tutorial that is kind of the drape tutorial. So we're gonna be doing that today. Um, Will this be available to rewatch? Yes, it will. For those of you who are rewatching this, I'm going to be doing the same thing twice. <laughs> so you've been warned. Um, this is specifically catered towards people who do want to follow along live. Because if you miss something midway during this stream, I'm going to be doing the same thing a second time. I'm trying to... I have two, I have, th I have these three, three monitors. I'm trying to figure out where to put these monitors. Okay. The stream, ha all the um, things you need are in the description. Uh, for those of you who asked if it will be um, available to rewatch, yes, on YouTube, it will stay here. On Twitch, it will like expire after 14 days. So it'll be here forever. Yes, welcome everybody from the Discord channel. So for those of you who don't know, join the Discord channel. That is also where I have the uh, assets already posted for the following part two and part three streams. You'll get them later. Uh, you'll, you'll get more. Um, 
will will kind of annoy you to the with the extent of all of the posts we will have to try to just help remind people and get you all set up. So again, this is going to be basics, and I am using the latest version of Marvelous Designer, but at least for this for this stream, most of the things should be available up to Marvelous Designer 9. I don't remember if 9 has a symmetrical uh, unfold. Um, so if you are working with Marvelous Designer 9, just remember to work on the half with everything and then um, merge them together by the end of this stream. Um, the older tutorials that we do have, for those of you who might be working with an older version of Marvelous Designer, the older tutorials that we have have the same similar concepts. So if you're a little lost, you can kind of look at those older ones or just join the Discord and ask questions there. So we're giving it a couple more minutes and then um, I'm going to start for the first the first round. And I'll be using the same kind of interface that we're all familiar with, even for the older ones. Um, you can have more uh, screens with Marvelous Designer 11. I'm not going to do that just because I don't want to fill my screen with like 10 different windows. But yes, I, I hope we have a bunch of the new new people for, that are in the Discord that were having like struggling with questions in here today because this will help answer a lot of your questions to get, get started and familiar with Marvelous Designer. and making sure and you guys can hear me okay right i want to make sure it's i want to make sure you guys can hear it uh israel the discord link is in the youtube description box so it, you have the ability to just click over to the right there i mean i can i can give you guys the discord link No one ever reads the description box of YouTube channels, I tell you. I mean, I don't either half the time, but still. All right, cool. You guys can hear me. Uh, do you remember there is a 30 second lag? So again... The Discord link is also in in the the bio of the videos and of the channels that you're watching this on. Awesome. Um, oh yeah, and I'm gonna say this every time. For those of you in the future who are going to ask me what this software is, it's Marvelous Designer, which is the name of the channel and the name <laughs> the name of the software i'm using if you ask me you will probably get sass back or if someone's stolen this content then i mean then that might be where you're watching it but i won't see that comment so don't ask me what we're using um uh, let's see. One more minute. So the last things, everyone here, I'm using Windows OS. I'm using a three button mouse. So basic defaults from all the other tutorials that you have seen. We're good to go. Uh, you have clothes already designed in Marvelous Designer. Yes, uh, Moral City, you can, but that's not what I'm covering today. Uh, you would want to look at the uh, fit suit tutorial or the fit suit demo. I'll make a tutorial later. Um, David, uh, to answer your question, you're asking me, this is not Clone 3D. David, to answer your question, uh, you were asking me if you can use commercial patterns that are marketed for individuals to create garments for themselves to make money, uh, also known as plagiarism. The answer I'm going to tell you is no. Technically, just don't. 
Uh, is this Glow 3D? This is Marvelous Designer, and there is a difference between the two software packages. Marvelous Designer doesn't have the same features that Glow does, specifically because people who are working in the VFX and film industries don't need to make bill of materials and um, have seam allowances because we don't we don't need to have that. But we still apply the same concepts. Instead, we need a uh, retopology and we need sorry more animation features. And so, like, you don't need seam allowances in that because it doesn't even work in, in Clo. The seam allowances are just there for when you print the patterns out. All right, so let's go to main. I should make my I should make myself smaller. Is this? It always bothers me. Um, so this is the layout we're going to use. This is familiar to everyone. This is Marvelous Designer 11, but this is the um, layout that MD10 and below, Marvelous Designer 10 and below have. So I'm keeping them where they are. So we're all familiar. So the library is going to be over here. I'm gonna give a quick tour. This part, I'm not gonna repeat on the second piece. So just so we all know, library is over here. 3D window is here. 2D window is here. And over here is where you normally would have your uh, fabric button, buttonhole um, tabs in Marvelous Designer, the older version. I agree with that. I entirely agree with the live transcribe. I wish I wish there was an option um, that was viable. Um, and then we do have this other portion here, which is the property editor. I will explain it when we get to that. This is a basic kind of just to get you started. Um, there is one thing for, for this chat that, for those of you who are new here, welcome. Um, comments about appearances will be deleted and blocked, whether they're um, polite or compliments or not. You are here to learn, and we are not here to do any of this. So I'm putting you in timeout, just so you know. We are not doing that today. So, Windows, Library, in your library, your favorites. We have garments, avatars, hangers, fabrics, uh, substance, interior fabric, and hardware and trims. For the, those of you using an older version of Marvelous Designer, you might not have hardware and trims, and or you might not have interior fabrics or substance. These are the folders that come default with Marvelous Designer, and it does have a whole bunch of free default assets such as your avatar. So I'm gonna be bringing an avatar into the workspace by just double clicking this avatar text. And then I have a couple of different uh, folders here that have different names. So for those of you who are on an older version, you might have different names here. Just in this case, we're choosing a male avatar. If you have male version two, please use male version two. These avatars are pretty much all the same. I just always end up picking this first one just because it's there. So double click to bring him into the workspace. So your avatar, so your default avatar that comes with Marvelous Designer will appear in the 3D window and his shadow will appear in the 2D window. That is because he is on the zero, zero on this grid. If he was further back, you wouldn't see this shadow. The shadow is going to be important for us while we are making this pattern. So I'm going to close this now. If you have not brought your avatar into the workspace, please bring your avatar into the workspace. I'm just using one of the basic avatars. Once that's done, I'm closing my library tab. I'm not gonna be using it anymore. For those of you who are new here, you can see how I'm zooming in and out. I am using my scroll wheel to zoom in and out in the 2D window. Same thing with the 3D window to move in the 3D space, I'm using my right mouse button to rotate in the 3D space. Is this a Blender add-on? This is not a Blender add-on. This is a software package called Marvelous Designer, which is the name of the channel that you are watching this on. This is a specific and a standalone software package that has been used in the film industry for many years. So anyway, rotating in the 3D space, right click. Selecting items, 
double click, left click. We're going to be using left click a lot. If I want to pan in the 3D space, I click my middle mouse button. Same thing with panning in the 2D window. Clicking that mouse button. My scroll wheel is really sensitive. Um, yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's the channel. It's the channel name. I just need a shirt. This is don't ask me. <laughs> don't ask me what the software is called. So zooming in and we're going to be starting working on everything in the 2D window. So zoom in on your avatar so you can see their shoulder and their hip. Okay. Does the simulation of garment and entity differ from your own avatars? Uh, not, no, just the size. So if you have like a dog, it's going to simulate different because the fit is different. Just like if you put your own t-shirt on a dog, it would simulate very differently just because of the fit. Marvelous Designer uh, has, at this current point, the most real, real to life uh, cloth simulation engine that there is. So the only difference is going to be how you fit the garment. So we're not using any different fabrics or anything. We're just using Fabric One. So for those of you who are new, we are using a tool that is in your toolbar. I'm popping this out. Some of you might not be able to but it looks like a, um, a little cut up wedge. Um, these are the pattern tools. So I'm gonna be using the polygon tool. There's a couple of them here. They're nested. Some of you might have it nested. Some of you might not. Again, I'm using Marvelous Designer 11. The hotkey is still the same. We're going to use the H hotkey. If, if you're still like kind of lost. So we're using H. So I'm going to show you what this is before we actually make the pattern and the tool and the kind of little extra tools in it. Selecting once with your mouse button, your left click, you can create a, a segment point, which is the beginning of a pattern. So if I just create, you know, four, I can make a pattern. It's going to, it's loading. There we go. Because I'm streaming. So I'm just selecting it and deleting it again. I'm going to show you. Just, you can create a polygon and you can close that polygon. There are other things you can do. So if I hold the control key, I really want, I want to find a good little thing so you guys can see the full keyboard. We have tutorials on this as well for those of you who want like the little pop-ups. And I have update one, we have updated ones coming soon. If you hold the control key and click once, there is a red dot now. So that is called a curve point. So for those of you who are familiar with vector uh, software, this is going to be very similar to vector software. The link in the video I referred to. I, can you remind me what I referred to? Um, so when you hold control and you click with your left click, you are creating curve points. If you say you made a mistake and you didn't mean to make a winding snake, you can use the backspace key on your keyboard to take a step back in the creation of that line, as you can see here. If you want to make straight lines that are in nine and technically 45 degree angles, hold shift and you'll see here it will lock to 45 degree angles. So if I really want it, I can do this. Whee! somehow get back. We are going to be using all of these. So I'm actually going to, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to not pop that up. I'm going to make it only my 2D window just to make it easier for everyone. So again, we are going to create our pattern now. <laughs> I'll, you'll take the snake. Uh, we're going to create our pattern now. Yeah, you can always use backspace. Uh, sometimes it's easier to restart. So again, making sure to have our shoulder in view and our hip in view. So you can use this on your own custom avatars. I don't recommend it if you want to follow along here. 
but I will explain why we're doing some things. Uh, sorry, I'm reading the chat while I'm doing this. Sometimes while simulating some part of it doesn't collide. I'll show you how to, I can show you that example. So when you're making your garment or when you're fitting something, let's just say from archive.org that you found online, that is free online uh, pattern making textbooks from the 1800s. You are going to be measuring, I'm drawing this, you do not copy me right now. I'm just drawing this line. You're measuring from the highest point on the neck to the peak of the shoulder curve. So the apex of this shoulder where it starts curving down and it's becoming the arm, basically where you would end up putting the joint inside of this avatar when you are ready to animate it. It's gonna cross through that joint line. So that is where your shoulder line is going to be. So if this avatar is not the same thing, um, if you're using like a giant avatar or like, you know, a monster, that is where your, sh if your shoulder is the highest point on the neck, that is where you're going to be drafting this and fitting this. Left click and hold. Oh yes. I always try to avoid this. So I always avoid left clicking and holding. The other one that I try to, I don't like people to do because it will ruin your pattern and you are, do not do this. Left clicking is creating Bezier curves. Some people really love Bezier curves. I do not recommend Bezier curves for the reason that, I'm like this might end up, we'll see how far, I might just adjust this to answer questions as we go. Bezier curves are great to create curved lines, but you are creating segment points in between those Bezier curves. You don't want to do that because if you want to sew your segment, you sew this whole line here and there's a curve along that line, you um, have to use a different method of sewing. And the cleaner your sewing line is and the cleaner your lines are, the m easier it will be for you to create your garments in Marvelous Designer. Okay, we're going to start. So we're going to create a shirt. Oh, actually, let me, let me ask. Let me check the chat here. Is it possible to import a curve? You can import uh you can import images in the background. Python, you're gonna be doing exactly what you just asked on on uh part three. So stay with us. Part three is gonna be at the end of the month, but stay with us. We will be doing that. Yeah, don't use Bezier curves, please. Just use, we're going to be using curve points. Uh, learning patterns and darts helps. I have experience doing it, so that is why I it's easier. Um, all of the concepts you are learning and having to use in Marvelous Designer apply to real pattern making. So if you learn real pattern making, you're going to save yourself a lot of heartache. All right. So we're going to make this pattern for the shirt. So in the center line where your avatar is centered, there is a little line that you it will want to snap to. This is the center line slicing your avatar in half. Using the polygon pattern tool or the H hotkey, I'm going to be clicking about in line with the neck here or with the high point shoulder low point shoulder just because we're going to be creating a basic t-shirt we're got, we, we can edit it later so we're creating our basic t-shirt you can create a segment point here if you want i don't recommend it i'm going to zoom in just because it's a, going to be a little easier for you all to see we are going to be creating a curve point so holding control and I'm going to click and create my neckline. Okay, I'm gonna do it a second time. So shoulder, clicking left click once. Uh, David, join our Discord channel and I literally have all of them in the resource channel, in the resources threads. So again, left click once for a segment point, and then I am going to be using a control to create my curve points. If you don't do it perfectly, that's fine. For example, this is a little too close to his neck, but that's okay. Again, if you make mistakes, you can go back. 
So we're basically making a half circle here. It doesn't have to be perfect because you can always fix it. And then once you're done with that neckline, we're creating one segment point there. So I've got my neckline made. So actually, Brian, you just asked. So there's a reason why I've just extended this past his shoulder. So we have our shadow. Uh, this is a this is a thing that a lot of people do encounter uh, when they're first started working in Marvelous Designer. We have his shadow, but that is a flat version of the center of this avatar. If we don't extend it past him, it's not going to fit him correctly, just like a t-shirt doesn't fit you correctly if it's too small. We do need to account for wrapping around the body. So that's why we're pushing it further past the shoulders and past the neck and we're giving it space to wrap around because we have to remember we are working in a 2d plane but we are work we are creating something for a 3d three-dimensional shape so i've created my uh first point here my first curve i'm going to be going all the way out to where that curve is so where that like kind of where that joint would be in the arm. We're going out here to where it starts to curve down. I do need more space in this, uh, but I, well, I can fix it later. So I'm not perfectly or exactly matching the slope of this shoulder. Oops. Backspace. So we're just going to use a straight, a straight line here. So I'm not using control. So you can choose to have it more sloped or not. I do recommend not having it as sloped. It will help you later. I'm zooming out here with my scroll wheel. And let's see. There is a way to keep the same distance between dots. Um, you do need to be cautious of it. And you also would need to measure everything. Did I, uh, did I hit enter or left click to create the first curve? I held control to create that first curve. If you really want to keep the same distance between your segment points, so Fredo, we're calling them segment points. These black dots are segment points. So you can right click when you're using this create polygon tool. Control is the same control on Mac. Oh gosh. I think it's a uh, alt control click. Uh, Mac buttons. I haven't had to use the, the Mac keys. Let me see. I'm trying to remember. I think it's command. Um, I haven't touched a Mac since COVID started happening. Yeah, I think it's command on Mac. Sorry, everybody. The scroll wheel behaves opposite of what I would expect. Out. Think of it, think of it, uh, list, think of it like pushing away and then pulling in. Push away, pull in. You can change it, but in the settings, but I'm not going into the settings today. It's pushing out, pulling in. So scroll wheel goes away to push out, pulling it in to view. Yeah, also we will not be, also make sure before we all continue this, we are not using GPU to simulate. We are going to be using CPU, okay? That's gonna happen later, but yeah. Yeah, think of it like think of it like you're like t like a piece of paper, like push like pulling it in to look at it, pushing it out to look away. All right, so to answer the question of if you want a very specific line that you have measured or you have a line in your head, you can see the numbers on my screen here. 
you can right click with the polygon tool before instead of the left click to create a line right click create polygon you can create the length here for those of you who are on older versions you do not have this mirror creation option just ignore it for now we're not using it I'm also not going to be measuring because we're going to be doing this the easy way. How do you switch between Bezier curves and straight lines? R uh, don't drag your, sh your Bezier curve. Bezier curves are drag. Straight lines are just clicking once. So don't, oops. So don't click and drag. All right, hold on. Give me one second. Doot, doot. So again, I'm holding control, or in this case, for those of you on Mac, command. I'm going to have to fix this neckline. That's fine. So click once. Just click once. Okay. This is um, So click once. Don't click and drag. I'm, ha I'm having to click away to answer questions. Um... Let's see. I think it's. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Uh... Trying to find those Mac controls. I will probably. Uh... I don't want to spend too much time on this because uh, I normally don't have it. It's in the manual. I just can't access it right now because it's slowing down my stream. It is in the Marvelous Designer manual. Um, for those of you who are using Mac, I did warn everybody I was using the PC hotkeys. I'm sorry that I don't remember. Yeah, so for those of you who uh, were worried about like s things being slow, GPU simulation is not even really meant for uh, working in Marvelous Designer, uh, for working more than just a giant amount of cloth and throwing it into the scene. Um, it's not accurate. CPU is where we're all going to be living this whole session and the whole month. Yeah, I need a hot... Yeah, I'm going to throw the hot key in there... Uh, in there next time i just don't have it and it's going really slow because i have a billion tabs open and i'm sorry if one of the other members here will be so kind as to find it for us let me actually let me just ask my team here Ask them if they can grab it for me, but I'm going to have to continue. So anyway, segment click segment. So just clicking, not clicking and dragging, clicking. And then I'm holding control to make my curve points backspace to correct any mistakes. And we're going to go past our avatar just a little bit. And then we're going to stop at about the apex of this curve on the shoulder go a little higher than you think we don't want to match the slope and we're going to do the same with this armhole okay so same thing with this armhole except for we are going to be ending out here but watch me before you follow i am making sure as well before i do this to keep this corner up here on the shoulder as square as I like pretty square so it's gonna be pretty square it's a little obtuse but it's gonna be pretty square so I'm using my control points holding uh, the curve points holding control you can make as many of these curve points as you want we're, we're making this pretty big so it's gonna be in a J shape I've made this severe just so you guys can see it I'm gonna be making a different one in a second but i do want you guys to kind of note the j shape it's going to be less strong but like if the j helps keep that in mind so it's going to be a bit of a j shape 
just less strong, okay? I'm gonna actually do right there. So it's pretty far out from his body because we are considering wrapping around and it being a loose fit. So we've made, I'm moving out so you can see it. So we've made our armhole and I wanna go straight down. Sometimes, you know, but I'm not perfect. You guys have seen me work really fast. So to make a perfectly straight line, I'm going to hold shift. As you can see, it I showed you earlier, it locks it in those angles and it'll hold it at a 90 degree angle for me. So I'm holding shift, I'm going down to, basically where the, the rise of the pants will start to that crotch line, also known as the hip line. So I'm just kind of approximating it. I can always make it longer. I'm going to click once. We are not clicking and dragging with the left mouse button. Clicking once. Why uh, GPU is not built f to be exactly the same to CPU. CPU is going to be accurate. GPU is just gonna get cloth in the space. So I'm actually not gonna move this mouse. You see these purple lines. These purple lines are showing me that this point that I have right here that I'm about to make is in line with the previous point, that previous segment point and the segment point above it. So it helps me kind of target exactly where I want it to be. And you can hold shift to go straight up or since I can, I can tell this is perfectly straight, I'm just gonna go up and meet that, that line, that point and create my first pattern. This is not perfect, that is fine. I will show you how to fix this. It fills your pattern once you've created a polygon. It fills your pattern with the basic default fabric one. To make this a little easier for everyone to see, I am going to turn off uh, the uh, texture surface and I'm going to my, my, um, 3D, my, three, my 2D display window up here and I'm going to transparent surface. So transparent surface is going to give me um, just my outlines, as you can see. I'm gonna click away just so it's black. This is what it looks like. This is not actually perfect or correct. That's okay. It's fine. We will, there, there's a reason why I'm not making it perfect. You can see the other tutorials that I have made them perfect in. This is for troubleshooting and working. So now that we've, I've created my polygon, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of minutes here. Um, and I'm probably gonna have to note how I'm gonna change this live stream a little bit. Cause I'm, I don't think I'm gonna repeat it at this point. Cause I do wanna cover some other things. Um, so if you, if a lot of you have created your, your first kind of shirt piece, we're gonna move forward here uh, in a second. I'm gonna read the questions while we do that. Uh, yes, thank you, Brian. Uh, we are not talking about appearances. Otherwise I will put you in timeout again. Uh, is it easier to draw a straight line and do the curve afterwards? Is there advantage to your technique? Uh, you can do either, Andy, actually. So. You can do both, but if you apply curvature later, make sure you are using uh, the add curve point tool, which I'm not showing here. Um, but m the reason I'm, put I'm placing it this way is because it's easier for you all to see and see the process as to why. And it's creating the curve points that I can then edit later. Uh, I'll show you the curve point here in a second once it's edited. Uh, for those of you who say your CPU sucks, I mean, I'm using a uh, a, a, C a CPU, gra I'm using a graphics card that's really old too. Well, at least you guys have seen the old one. Um, but yeah, you might just need a newer one just because of the version you might be using. Why no? I don't understand the why no GPU th TH8 month, but all right. Where do I make it transparent? Okay, I'll make it transparent again. So 
If yours is highlighted, highlight it. If not, you can use the A key or the transform pattern tool, select it. And for those of you who are on MD uh, Marvelous Designer 11, it's, it's in this little display window. For those of you who are not, um, I believe the hotkey is actually control T. Uh, yours will actually be in the windows here and it'll look like um, a, a cloth texture option. You don't have to do that. Um, but you can. On, the, on our website link? More tutorials. Oh, let's see. Oh, great. Uh, for the, for If you're looking for more tutorials, Robert, just stay on the YouTube channel. Uh, all of the tutorials on the website are directly linking to the YouTube channel. <laughs> Hello from Italy. Um, okay, so you don't have to make it transparent. I just made it transparent for everybody to see. It's how I prefer to work. You literally don't have to. All right, shift T, thank you. Yeah, it's the older one. Okay, so... To, to fix this, I do want this to be a little bit uh, better of a curve. Do not do this with me. Um, I'm actually going to make this monochrome again. You're not copying this. I'm just doing this as an example, okay? Uh, unfold. There's a reason why I'm doing this. So I'm zooming in. This is very high poly, right? Uh, very this is 20 particle distance so it's not not clean so my curves don't look clean just because of the of uh, the um density of the mesh this is fine but i want to point out how this neckline is going upward and it's creating a point on the neck that is why we are going to fix this because this is going to cause issues in the future and it's not fun to work in i'm going to go back to where we were and we are going to fix we're going to fix this neck. If you have that problem, you're going to do this with me. We are going up. I'm going to close this. We're going up to the edit pattern tools. So you'll see your pattern tools. You, if you're in an older version of Marvelous Designer, you're probably you're just going to see all of these individually. We are going to be using the edit curvature tool or the C hotkey. So it's the C key on your keyboard. So with this edit curvature tool, I can just grab this line that has a curve in it, which is, uh, w which you can do with a straight line, but it creates Bezier curves, and that's why I use curve points first. So I can just clean this up by grabbing that line with the edit curvature tool and adjust just my neckline. I want to make sure that my neckline, where it's going to be going across that center, is at, a, at least at a 90 degree angle just so it's a nice, clean, smooth curve. If it goes upward, it's gonna create some weird artifacts. You don't wanna see that. Eh. All right, same thing with this. It's not perfect, but it's almost there. You say at a curvature tool is the best tool. There's another one that is also awesome, which is the um, edit curve point tool. So we did just add a bunch of curve points. Well, if we need to edit them or if we want to make a straight line of curve, but without Bezier curves, we could use the edit curve point tool. I can add curve points with this tool. I can also adjust where they are, which is great. So I can clean this up a little bit. So this one was imperfect. It's not super clean, that's fine. We can check the fit later. This is going to be a very basic, basic t-shirt. This line is straight, this looks good. For making sleeves, yeah, it is. Uh, well, we're actually gonna get to that soon. As well, uh, if you want this to be wider, I'm going to Make mine transparent again. If this is not wide enough, I'm gonna add it now just because I do know that this is going to be needing to be a little bit wider. 
I'm using the edit pattern tool or the Z hotkey and I'm going to grab this line. So I'm selecting it with my left click and I'm just going to pull it outward like that. You can also select not just the line, but the segment points and pull it out. And there is a difference in that it selects also the, uh, because that point is connected to those curve points. I'll show you what I just did there in a second. It adjusts that curve for me as well. So if I like the shape of that curve, I can keep it. Now I can make a mistake and push it up this way. But if I hold shift from where I start, it will go across that, that line. So I'm just making it wider by selecting all those pieces and holding shift and letting go. And my line is still straight, nice and square, and it looks, it looks good. So now that I'm done with this, I'm hoping you guys are all, all still here with me. I need to start making my back pattern piece. And luckily for us, the back pattern piece is going to be pretty easy. Using the transform pattern tool, just select your pattern or use the A hotkey, selecting my pattern. This is where it's going to be. You got, we're still, we're actually, no, we're still here. So select your pattern. I'm going to right click. You can use the hotkeys if you know them. I'm going to click down here. Right click, copy, control C. Now there's a, now I have copied this. I can um, copy, control C. You would do this if you're doing the, the, the hotkeys. Control C, it would be then control R, or I can just select mirror paste in this case. Mirror paste is creating a reflected copy of this piece. These are not symmetrically linked pattern pieces. For those of you who know that that is an option and a feature, these are not symmetrically linked. They're two different pieces. One is just a reflected copy. Just, just a heads up. And I do also want to note this. For those of you who are new, this, this is not perfect. Um, we're gonna be making changes. Um, to make it easier for those of you to remember, when you're making sleeves, it should look like an eggplant or a wine glass, and they will not be the same in the end. But if, if you want to be lazy, they can be. So it should look like a wine glass because it wraps around the joint of the arm. So keep that in mind. Here is where I do believe we are going to be straying for those of you who are on older versions. So Marvelous Designer 11, I am going to right click. I'll be doing the two different ways to do it. For those of you who are on newer versions of Marvelous Designer, we have the unfold with symmetrical editing and sewing option. So click that on your front or your back. In this case, it doesn't really matter. I'm showing you the same thing. Unfold with symmetrical editing and I click. So this pattern is going to be symmetrical across this center line that I picked. I don't know if you're here, a person who is here on YouTube who had this question an hour ago in, in the channel um, and was asking this. You must select it with your edit pattern tool and right click. It's not going to show up because it's gray because it already has a symmetrical um, editing applied. Okay, unfold with symmetric editing, but you have to use the edit pattern tool if you're using it that way. The other way is to select your pattern with the transform pattern tool, right click and choose clone pattern with linked editing, symmetric pattern with sewing, or the hotkey is control D. So these have the same concept applied. This one has it symmetrical over that center line. These two pieces are symmetrically linked. For those of you who are working on older, older patterns and you don't have the symmetrical option, just make a copy. 
and just remember to be working on on half if you're making any fitting adjustments work on the half delete the other half that doesn't have those changes then copy paste sew them together so for those of you who don't have this option symmetrical link sew them together okay but for those of you who are on marvelous designer 11 i'm going to right click um with the edit pattern tool you can also use it with sewing i'll explain sewing in a minute um, but for those of you who are here, uh, I should tell you now, uh, we'll get, we'll get to the sewing in a minute. We'll get to the sewing in a minute. For those of you who are on Marvelous Designer 11, you can just right click the, that line, one of the lines that they're shared with, uh, uh, uh Grixis, uh, yes, it would, but there are people in the chat right now who do not have that option. So I'm showing them all of the options that are available to them. So I'm just going to select merge. So those are all the options for those of you who are on older versions right now. So now we have two fronts. Uh, unfold merges the patterns. No, I'm taking a step back, everybody. You don't have to do this. I'm only doing this to answer a question. There's two unfolds there. Uh, it just unfolds whatever your pattern is on that side, but it's not symmetrically linked. That is the difference. So for those of you who have it, unfold with symmetrical editing. So I've got my two front and my back, and there's a reason why they're not linked, because this is going to change. Now that I'm, I'm pretty much done, at least for now with the 3D, with the 2D window only, I'm going back to what we all love, our little default window here. There's a reset button set in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. We will always have that. It's been there. It's on all the versions. I always hit this refresh to default just so everybody here knows and they're familiar with it. Even when we have different options. I'm closing my library again. This is only so that you guys can see. So I have my 2D window and I have my 3D window now. Closing my pattern tools, I have a front and a back. The stream, yes, the stream is gonna be available afterwards, but remember, you don't get to follow along with me as easily. Um, I don't think it, no, no features were removed. I think the only thing is that the uh, nesting was changed. Yeah, these, these are all gonna be available, but it's just not gonna be as slow. Yeah, the refresh button's always been in that bottom right hand corner. They're they're all here. Uh they're just in a different location, kind of. Okay, so I've got my two patterns here. You don't have to do this. I'm doing this for you guys to see. So they're currently mimicking exactly where they are in the 3D in the in the window. I'm gonna be placing this on my avatar so that I can make my sleeves next. There's a reason I'm doing this. So to place this around your avatar, you're going to go to the uh, 3D display window. You all should have this. And there are uh, show avatar, show arrangement points, bounded volumes, etc. We're going to toggle show arrangement points. Okay. So in the 3D window, I can take my left click button, my left click on my mouse and move it around. Uh, reset 3D. Yes, uh, don't reset 3D arrangement. I told you not to do that because you don't need to. You want to set reset 2D arrangement. Reset 3D arrangement is setting it to where it was in the 3D space and it didn't really have a space in 3D. So you want to use reset 2D arrangement to match the 2D arrangement on the right side. So it matches your UVs basically. All right. So like you don't have to do this. You can always select it and then do that in the 3D window. So I'm going to select my front pattern piece. They're literally both the same, whichever one works best for you. I like to use the one that is currently on top of this avatar. And I'm going to hover my mouse after selecting this over these arrangement points. So it'll appear on these arrangement points. It can go on any of them, including the legs. But because this is the full shirt, I'm just going to select it 
on that center arrangement point. If you have them linked, uh, and there's two pattern pieces, make sure, like, let's just say I have this left pattern piece, place the left pattern piece on the left side. And they will both be placed symmetrically. In this case, most of us here are going to have the single piece. So do the single piece. How do you set? We have a tutorial for that. Um, can't do that now. There's a tutorial for that on this YouTube channel. Um, so same thing with the back, selecting the back, rotating with my right click and then placing it on my avatar. Again, I'm just choosing this back piece. This is kind of slicing through his torso. So I'm going to cover what is over here on the right side. So this is the property editor. I've referenced it once. I've referenced it once, but it's kind of, it's going to, I'm going to cover it for a second here. This is the property editor for the item I have selected. There's a couple of different property editors. We're not messing with anything else except for the pattern property editor. So the property editor for the item I've selected, which is this pattern here, it's got a name. Don't really care about the name. Um, telling me about it. We kind of don't really need to know much right now, except for, you know, I'm going to tell you about particle distance, layers. So I told you about particle distance for a second. That's where all of the um, triangles are. That's where your mesh is. Uh, the higher the particle distance, the lower the density of the mesh. And then layers. If you want something on top of something else, make it a higher layer. But we're going all the way down. You actually don't have to do this. I'm just showing you this because people might be confused, especially by the size of their avatar, if it's not the same one as I have. We're going all the way down. I've got fabric. I've got arrangement right here. And I'm going to arrangement. Um, I've selected this piece and it's curving into him. So I have my arrangement, point name, curved, position, X, Y. The only thing I really care about right now is that offset. So if you fiddle with it, it'll push it outwards away from our avatar go, or goes in. It's offset along this arrangement uh, curve here. It is, it is tied to the bounding volumes. So arrangement points and bounding volumes are here. For, for those of you who don't really care, I'm not going to get into this too much. You want to move, you want to just take this and make sure that the offset, it's not colliding with them. It'll make it easier for you. So I've just adjusted this. You don't actually have to. You shouldn't have too much of an issue. And I'm going to click away. I don't need my arrangement points anymore. So I am going to turn off the show arrangement points. Uh, for those of you who are talking about mesh right now, TriMesh is going to be the most accurate for cloth simulation. If you are trying to simulate something with quad mesh and Marvelous Designer, you will not get accurate cloth simulation. Like real life accurate, you're never going to get it. TriMesh is going to be the most accurate. So I've got these pieces um, here in my workspace. We are going to be using normal simulations. So there's a little arrow here. That's the simulation. Um, fast, normal, fitting accurate. That one, we're not touching it. We're just going to be using normal. So the hotkey for that is the space bar. Don't do this. I'm going to do it to show you why. Like, I've got it here. I If I hit simulate, it just falls to the ground. I'm hitting control Z while simulation is off. Uh, we need to sew them together. So for those of you who are on older versions, you can do it. Um, here as well, you want to use the sewing tools now. So I'm going to pop them both out just so everybody can see. I have my sewing tools, my edit sewing tools, things like that. We're going to be using uh, my fabric splits. That's very weird that your fabric splits. Don't use offset then. It's fine. You can still follow along. So I'm using a set. We're going to be using segment sewing tool. All of you who are here, you should not have used any Bezier curves or uh, segment points in your curves. So we're using the segment sewing tool right now. So I can sew it in the 3D window or the 2D window. 
So I can just select my line in my 3D window and double click if you're working in 3D and create a sewing relationship. These little lines indicate where the sewing relationship is going. Do not uh, try to avoid crossing them. I'll show you what happens if you cross them. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do this in the 2D window now, just so everyone can see. Make sure if you sew them, you sew them the same way. You can reference what's happening in the 3D window to make sure you're sewing it correctly. You can see if you don't by sewing it like this. Don't do this, but if you do, I'll show you how to fix it. I've crossed my sewing here, okay? Uh, I don't want this. This is going to cause me problems because this piece, this corner is going to go over here. You can see as well, these are these little lines here indicate the direction or like the starting point of your sewing. So I'm going to be calling them notches because they are notches. So this notch is starting at the neck and this one is starting at the shoulder. So that's why it's crossing. I don't want that. So to fix it, I'm using the edit sewing tool. It's also the B as in boy hotkey. And I'm selecting my lines, okay? Right clicking that sewing line and using control B or just choosing reverse sewing. Now they're going in the same direction. And now in the 3D window, they're not crossed. So at this point, you should have your shoulders and your sides sewn. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And then now that they're sewing, before we simulate, there is also a reason why he is, uh, a, the shirt is above him right now. It's pretty high because gravity is gonna take into effect like you saw earlier and it will just fall down. This helps put it on him and I don't have to pull at it too much. So if yours looks just like mine, Let's go ahead and give it a simulate with the space bar or with the arrow key, the arrow button up here. Choosing normal and I'm hitting the space bar. There we go. I have, I have my shirt. It's the beginning of my shirt, but I've got it. And while it is simulating, you know, you can grab at it, pull at it. Obviously this isn't perfect. It's not done. But we're almost there. So once you can do this, we can start moving forward and kind of checking our fit. Because obviously this needs to change. So if it's on your avatar, I don't see anybody complaining about it. Not happening for them. I'm gonna close the stream link for me. Apparently I was watching myself. Now that it's on, on your avatar, we can move forward with our, our pattern changes. So for a basic t-shirt, you know, this back piece is always higher, right? So let's go ahead and do that to the back. So when I select this piece in 3D, I'm gonna turn off my simulation just to make it faster for everybody and I'm using the select move button. I can select this piece because to identify that this is the pattern I'm looking at, make sure I know. There's always going to be a blue dot, by the way, when you click. So that's gonna be, that's called, we call, uh, call it the little, little ghost. That's where you're grabbing things. That's uh, also where you can rotate things in 3D. Don't do this. I'm just gonna hit Control Z afterwards. But that's the axis of which you will rotate something. So I'm selecting this. This is my back piece. What do you know? Here's my back. This needs to go up higher, like about here. So to do that, we are going to use the Edit Pattern tool again. And I'm going to grab this point. So clicking and dragging, selecting it. I'm gonna grab it and raise it. You can hold Shift to make sure you don't make any mistakes. We're gonna raise it and we're just gonna eyeball it. I mean, clearly that's not perfect. It's a big little like M there. So to fix that, we're gonna use the tool we used before, which is the uh, edit curvature tool or edit curve point tool, whichever one you prefer. I'm gonna use the edit curvature tool. 
and I'm going to make sure that this is going to be straight. This has, this isn't working out as we can see. There's a lot of curve points here. So if you're having the same problem as I am, you can go and edit your curve point tool. So I'm going to actually delete this curve point. So I've selected it and I just hit the delete. I'm going to do it again with this one. So I'm using the V hotkey, V as in Victor, and then I'm just uh, selecting the delete key. And now I have a bit smoother of a curve. There's a bit of a point here. I can tell it's creating a, a point, a little V, and I don't want that. So I am going to, you know, adjust it so it's nice and straight. And then using the edit curvature, edit curve point tool again, I like to make sure that these are in line with each other. At least some of them are. That either they're in line or just slightly above. Because when you get too close, it's a little too much. And then this is obtuse, but I do want to remove... While you're working, sometimes you'll end up seeing this getting pretty square. So just keep an eye on it, and depending on what you're making... You don't want it to be too square. I hit spacebar to simulate. I can kind of check the shape of my neck here. So I've adjusted my neck. It's got, it's higher in the back, lower in the front. You can check my, my curve here. It's like maybe I need this to be uh, a little bit cleaner. So for, for these things, this is where you're gonna be troubleshooting. So for the neckline for all of your all of your lines really for things that are sewing into each other across the body or across anything you want it to be nice and smooth a nice smooth curve because if something is standing standing up perpendicular to it it'll cause you some problems while you're working um, this happens a lot when people are making sleeves which we're going to encounter here in a minute especially when these points are not uh, the same length and they like have like a point going straight up into the into the shoulder. They get really confused and it's really frustrating for a lot of people. So the key thing to take away from this is to remember that you are creating smooth lines, a nice smooth transition between your pieces. So you can adjust this back piece or you can also like adjust your neck. So again, I can just use the edit curvature tool here. If I really want, I don't have to. So like kind of clean this up. It's up to you. Here's where we're all going to be doing a little bit of uh, adjustments here. For me, this back is still, uh, it's a little too obtuse of an angle. So I am going to be adding my curve point uh, back up here. And simulating. It's pretty blocky. That's okay. But see, we can see that it's a nice smoother curve than I had before after I made that change. So this is nice and smooth. This is still 20, part 20 particle distance, so it's pretty, pretty, you know, sharp angles that we don't really want. But this is looking pretty good. This is a good base block. So when you make all of your pieces, especially for, for shirts, Especially, like, let's just say this is a monster. This piece, you do not want it to be uh, not fitting on his shoulders. So the number one place to, ha to fit is the shoulder because everything's hanging from the shoulder. Wherever it's hanging from, that is going to be the place that you need to make sure it fits first. Then you do everything else. Any mistakes you make from where uh, the pressure is on this avatar. So let's just say it was actually hanging from his head. If you make a whole bunch of changes below the head, but then you fix where it's hanging from the head, it's going to fit differently. So for a shirt, we're doing it from the shoulders. Now, you should have made it bigger than his actual body uh, here in the 3D, here in the 2D window, and he should have enough space to wrap around him and have it be a little bit, a little big. And that's fine. But we can also see that it's not too big to wrap around his, his chest here. I'm going to make this opaque just so we can kind of see through it. He's got, he's got some space around him. 
Um, if you don't have the exact same space that my my avatar does, that's fine. If you have way more, you do want to make it a bit smaller. Because we're going by the fact that it's going around his hips, which for women, they tend to be larger. For men, they tend to be uh, a little, uh, like almost the same, but sometimes smaller, more narrow than the shoulder. So just keep that in mind that you need to make sure to wrap around the torso for the chest and for the hip if you're making go down past his hips. This is a really long shirt and that's fine. And the sleeve is also pretty, pretty long here. Let's just say this was too long. I might, I might make mine smaller. So there's a couple of ways to fix that. I'm going to show you. Using the edit pattern tool or the Z hotkey, I'm selecting this, this whole side here, right? You saw me pull it out earlier. It's okay. I'm selecting this whole side and I'm selecting this side as well. So you can actually do them at the same time. So I'm gonna select, make sure to hover, select that side, holding shift, and I'm selecting this side as well. So I'm still holding shift. If I let go of shift, I'm gonna lose it. Or if I'm holding shift, I'm not gonna lose it, but hold shift when you select. Grab those patterns and then move in. Like I've let go of shift. You can hold shift again to make sure that you're moving along the same line and you're not making any mistakes. So let's just say I wanna make it just slightly smaller you're seeing me move them in at the same same distance. I picked the corresponding, like le the, this right side, I picked the right side of this pattern. So those are moving at the same time. Before I simulate, I can see how much I've taken away here on the arm. And it's on the shoulder here as well. So I can double check before I let it simulate. But there we go. We can see here that I made it just slightly smaller. That's okay. This still fits on him. We can see here, it fits on the shoulder. So if you need to make adjustments like that, feel free to do so now. Next, I am going to just make a little bit of an adjustment to these sleeves, to my armholes. So these armholes in real life, they're normally not actually the same. So in real life, this is going to be more narrow than this one. Just because the front, we have a joint here. We can actually see how this fits. We actually want this to be further in. So you can do this. You don't have to. Uh, the shirts we're making are going to be oversized uh, on the next one. So you can do this if you want. I'm just showing you how to make, how to kind of keep an eye on how things are fitting. So if this is too far out on his shoulder, but it fits on the top, it means your curve isn't deep enough. So I can use the edit curvature tool or the, or the V hotkey, and I can just deepen this curve. Do you see how now that we're looking at it, it's far straighter. I'm going to do that again. You see how it's coming outward in the 3d window. If I grab it and move it inward, I'm gonna actually grab where I did. Okay, if I grab it and move it inward. So it's, again, it's that J shape. It's much straighter. So feel free to fiddle around with it. So we have a nice kind of curve around this shoulder. I like it to be straight just because of the sleeve type I'm, we're making here. If this is lower, your sleeve's gonna be a different shape. Um, that's fine. Just keep an eye on how you're doing this. So I like to true to clean this up a little bit. It's a little, it's a little wonky. I'm just gonna delete that curve. Because again, like I said earlier, um, I'm gonna true this up. So I'm selecting both of these pattern pieces, right clicking, and I want to make them aligned with each other so I can check that. I'm right clicking, choosing uh a line and bottom. So now I've got, you know, that wine glass shape. 
but we can see that my curve isn't isn't uh, perfect, right? It's not it's not a really nice slope. So I'm going to fix that. You really don't have to. I personally prefer to have it be a little cleaner. I'm just cleaning this up again. I'm going with that pear shape. Well, pear. It's like a pear. It's also like a pear wine glass. Generally, uh, the tighter fitting this is, the more defined the shape is. Simulating, I've got a nice armhole here. The front's always going to be like more more cut than the back. It, it really depends on how you want to fit it. This is how I'm doing this one today. You can make it less. Like here, I'll just do this. It Again, it depends on your fit. If you really want this to be your fit with this narrow, narrow, narrow piece, you can. Here, I'll make it a little bit closer. It just depends on how you want your fit to be. So we're gonna do we're gonna do it this way just so it's a little easier for everybody who has not fit made it perfect. So it's that wine glass shape. It's really close. They're similar. These are not the same. That's okay. The sleeve is gonna be the same today because it's a basic t-shirt block. There's a reason why. So we're we're gonna make the sleeve next. Uh, we are going to go back up to our uh, avatar and show, turn the arrangement points back on. So make sure you turn off your simulation and then show arrangement points. We're not going to do it just yet, but um, we're going to make our, our sleeve next. So I'm going to just draw a rectangle. I'm just going to draw a square. Okay, draw a square with me, everybody. We are doing this the draping way. So for those of you who are uh, on older versions, you actually have the drape tutorial that is available on, uh, it's the drape tutorial that's on YouTube. So it's called drape. Are we all still here, by the way? Just wanna make sure the chat's been a little, little dead for a couple of minutes. It looks like we are. but I might not be getting the messages. That makes me concerned. Okay, we're, we're all doing good. All right, so fiddle around. We're making just something very, very basic. Okay. We've got our square. It's okay if it's not perfect. Ooh. How do I create seems to show a normal max? I cannot answer that question right now because that is not what we are covering. So, and I've already taken longer than I want. I'm supposed to do this twice. So we're gonna use these arrangement points again. Okay, good, you're all focused. I just wanna make sure we're here. Sometimes I have lost the, the stream before. Okay, so you have your square, click your square, and we're gonna put it on one of these, on one of these points. You can do the front, you can do the back. Make sure it is on either the front arm or the back of the arm. So once it's on your avatar, I'm gonna do this a little bit for now so you can see it. Once it's there, uh, we're, th this, is, this is the drape method. This is also a little bit of a cheating method because we don't have to do math and I love that we don't have to do math. So it's on that space. Make sure you know which side is the top right now. Using your um, little ghost, using your mouse, click. Make sure that this is the top. And we're just gonna make it taller. What we're looking for is to collide it with approximately the shoulder point. So once yours kind of looks like this, go ahead and do that. If you click this again, it's gonna lower it because it's gonna center that pattern. Right now we are cheating. Oh, did someone have a question? How did you turn it? Yes, spacebar, or you can just select this button up here, the arrow. You can turn off simulation with that. Otherwise it is the spacebar. So once you, it looks like this, front or back, doesn't matter. We're gonna go ahead and turn off the arrangement points. 
Uh, for those of you on older versions, you do have this tool. Um, if you're on Marvelous Designer 4 and watching this, I believe it's called the Chalk Tool. Uh, you might have to... Uh, if there, if you're on Marvelous Designer 4, I don't know why you're here right now. Yes, and so actually we're going to be uh, accommodating for that. So make sure that your pattern is also on... Um, it, I, it, I've submitted a report. It's it's opaque surface. It's translucent surface. Make sure you can kind of see through it, but you can also see where it overlaps because that's going to be key. So we are going to be making our sleeve in the 3D window. Okay. So there is another thing before we continue this on is that we do need, it makes it a little bit easier for us. You can't make it bigger. Use the transform pattern tool, select it, and then grab one of the edges. So we do also need to make this wider. We can see here that this is that, right here is our side seam, and right here is that top of our shoulder seam. I, we do want it to kind of reach up there. So we're gonna do the same thing we did at the top on the sides. Just like kind of creep it up there. It doesn't have to be like perfect, perfect. But the closer you get, the better it is. You can adjust offset. I'm not doing it in this case, just so everyone can kind of see. We're, we're close enough. So we all know that sleeves have a crazy shape for those of you who have just looked at the sleeves that are available in Marvelous Designer. You can do math for them. But you can also draw and not have to do math, which is the easy way, which is what we're going to do. Once you have an approximation of what this looks like, we're going to go ahead and in the 3D window is where we're going to be doing this. In the 3D window, there are some 3D line tools. So it looks like a pen that goes on, like, on a shirt. I know there's a 30 second lag. Uh, by the way, so there's the edit line tool and then the line three, the line three D pattern tool. It looks like a pen, like a like a uh, an inkwell pen that go and a shirt basically. Make sure it's the three D pattern tool, not the avatar tool. We're gonna select that tool, and we will we'll adjust it in a minute. We know it's colliding with it, so if you really want. You can fix, I'm, I'm gonna do this again, just so everyone's here. And get off this tool. So if you really want to have it be perfect and you're, you're stressing out about not being able to trace this perfectly, you can do the offset thing again and make it closer if you really want. But when you do, it does lower it. So you need to make, make sure that you uh, raise this back up, okay? So that, that is an option to do this. So make sure at the very least, like this is close to the to the edge and this is close to the edge. So, cause sleeves are always gonna be a little bit larger than the armhole they're sewing into, that's fine. So once you're happy with how this looks, again, we're going up to those line tools, uh, line pattern, let me, come here. The edit line pattern tool, or the line pattern tool, not the edit line pattern tool. And we're just gonna draw kind of where it's colliding. Same thing, same thing, same concept as drawing a polygon. Uh, control is curve points. Shift is straight line, straight lines, but they are crazy. And backspace works. Same exact concept. So we're just kind of, you know, drawing where it collides. As close as we can. I'm still holding control, by the way, everybody. Uh, and I'm using my left mouse button to rotate. It's a little finicky, but it's fine because it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm letting go of my control and I'm double clicking to finish my line. Your line, once it's done, will appear in the 2D window. Let me monochrome surface for you you'll see a gray line you can't interact with it right now that's okay and then you see this line in the 3d window i'm like wait there we go let me click away 
it looks just like your internal lines. It just looks, it looks like uh, the lines that we did when we drew these patterns. Just the same. In fact, I can grab those curve points and move them about. I can hit Control Z. I can adjust it to be closer if I really want. So feel free to make those changes. And make any fixes you want. Your This should not be curved upwards. We're going to fix it. But I'm going to leave it like this. I've got my approximate shape of this point. Once you have created your, your shoulder, your line, uh, we're going to clean this up. This isn't perfect. That's okay. Using the edit line 3D pattern tools. There's two of them. Make sure it's not avatar. Make sure it is your 3D line pattern tool. Selecting that tool. Selecting that line. Right click. So you have a couple of options once you've right clicked. You can delete it, you can add a point, add a curve point. You can, right now, cut and sew it. Don't do that, we're not doing that because we need to clean this up. We're going to convert to internal shape. So select that one and that's gonna make this red in the 3D window. Yep. And this line now becomes yellow when it's selected. I'm closing this, this tab here, this little pop-up. Once you've done that, like once you have a shape that's kind of a curve like this, like a little ski jump, it's fine. It shouldn't have the jump part though. Once you have that, we are going to clean this up in the 3D window, 2D window. Looks a 3D window. In the 2D window, so we're, you're popping open those edit pattern tools again. Selecting the edit pattern tools. Here's where I can edit my, my internal line as well. So we made, uh, we used the polygon tool. Well, we have internal lines too. So what we did just now was we did, we created an internal line in a roundabout way. So this is an internal line. You can do the exact same thing you did to make the um, pattern. You can do that inside of the pattern as well using the internal shape tools. So we created an internal line here. When I select the internal line tool, it shows me all of those points, all those curve points that I, if I wanted. I have a couple of other things here. Uh, I'm not really gonna do much with it right now. Uh, just, it's there, we made one. So going over to the edit pattern tool, I can edit my pattern and my internal line the same way that I did all of my other ones. So first of all, this, these points need to get to the edge of my pattern. So select your line with the edit pattern tool, and then we're going to right to right click. And there's a couple of options for this internal line. I can unfold it if I wanted, I don't, I don't wanna do that. Uh, what I want is at the bottom here. We have two options, extend and trim, and extend and trim and add point. I don't want to add a point right now. It doesn't really matter to me. We're going to choose extend and trim to pattern outline. Selecting my pattern outline. And uh, it's it was pretty quick, but you saw this is now touching the edge here. And I've just made sure it's touching the edge here. Now, I I could make this that, that sleeve cap if I wanted, but I don't really need to yet. I can I can actually fix this right now. So with sleeves, they don't actually need to be, come here. They aren't ever gonna go upward. So I want this to be a straight line, just like I did with my armhole. So this is also needing to become straight. They can go and create a point, but in some circumstances, not in this case. Because this underarm here is a, is a straight line, this is going to be a straight line as well, or a 90 degree angle. So to fix that, we can use again, the edit curvature tool or the edit curve point tool. So there's a lot of curve points here. So you can move them individually. You can drag, select and release to select multiple and just delete them with the delete or a backspace key like that. 
or you can just use your edit curvature tool and, you know, fiddle around with it a little bit. So long as it's a nice hill with a slope. I'm going to clean this up a little bit more and do this. So it's a hill with a slope. It's like it's a bunny hill. <laughs> it's a bunny ski hill. It's for the kids. It's a little kitty, kitty ski hill. Safe little sine wave. Once it looks like this, we're going to go ahead and select that line with our edit pattern tool. So once it's cleaned up, I'll give you guys kind of a second if you have any questions. Once it's cleaned up, we're going to select this line. Uh, there is a 30 second lag, so I'm just going to wait a second. Um, make sure you guys can see the tools I'm using. Once you're done, Oh, also this top here, also note that it is not a, uh, a cur it's not a, a sharp point. So make sure, oops, using the curve tool, make sure it is not a sharp, a sharp point. Again, we want it to be a nice smooth curve. It'll transition nicely once we either unfold it or sew the two sides together. So once you, once you've done that, select this line. You don't get how I made the line. Uh, List, did you see the edit line tool? Cause I'll, I'll do this faster the second time. We might just move forward just because we're almost done. But I made this line by tracing where this was colliding with the pattern using the line tools. And I used the, the 3D line pattern tool and I just drew a line along the curve. I'm gonna actually do it this way. So I just drew the line where it's colliding. You can see here, I'm gonna have to make some changes. That's okay. Cause this is how it's, it's colliding with itself. So I just made this curve with that line tool, okay? Once I finish drawing it, I double click and it looks like it looks yellow in the 3D window. Once you've done that, you can use the edit line pattern tool. Make sure you select that line with that with the tool or it's make sure it's selected and you can only do this in the 3D window. Right click that line and then convert it to an internal shape. So now I can't interact with this over here anymore, but I can interact with it over here. I don't need this weird shape, so I'm going to delete it. Don't don't simulate. <laughs> um, so, oh, come here. So you can adjust this if you really want. Uh, I'm going to fuss with it a little bit more while everyone's still doing their thing. So you can see here, if I really want to pull this all the way out, I can in the 2D window, because now I have this internal line and I don't have to worry so much about it. This is a crazy shape, that's okay. It's really long and it's not how it should look. This, this is more accurate and it'll end up adjusting here. Once you have something that looks like this, we're going to use the edit pattern tool, select your line, Make sure that these edges are touching the exterior of this pattern. Right click and choose extend and trim to pattern outline. Most of you have probably already done this and are probably waiting. That's fine. I'm just repeating it a second time. The only reason we're doing that is to make sure that it's on the edges because you can cut something and have it not actually completely slice a pattern open, which is great for other things. But in this case, we do want to just cut this entire piece off. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on now. Right click. And there's two options here. Using cut or cut and sew. So in this case, I don't need this other piece here. So I am just going to choose cut. So right click that line and choose cut. And it'll cut that whole line. Once that's done, you can use the Z hotkey or the edit pattern tool 
or the A hotkey. It depends on which one you want. You can double click the lines or you can just select the pattern. We're gonna delete that. I don't need it. We don't need it. Hit the delete key, backspace or delete. So we've got half of our sleeve. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit just so you guys can see. I've just in my 2D window pulled away from, from the shirt, the, uh, the back. The back's gonna be cleaned up as we can see this overlap. It's not perfect. That's okay, because that's that's what we're doing. We're learning. We're all learning how to uh, check the fit while you're making something. So once you have something like at about this shape, it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. For those of you uh, who are on older versions, you know, do the the copy paste. You can do the symmetrical pattern with sewing, or for those of you who are on the current version, right click the center line. So it's gonna be this line because we want it, we, we made the front or the back, we made half of it, we wanna make the other half. Right click, unfold with symmetrical editing. Doesn't look perfect, but it's, we're, we're gonna make it good. We're gonna make it perfect. So to check our fit, there's a couple of ways to do this. But let's go ahead and use the sewing tools again, but we're gonna use a different sewing tool this time. I'm gonna close my edit pattern tools here, and then I'm gonna go up to the sewing tools. I'm popping them out, you don't have to. We are going to use the other uh, very, very uh, often used tool, which is the free sewing tool or the M hotkey. With this tool, I can sew past those segment points. So I can sew longer than those segment point, points, unlike the segment sewing tool. I can only go in between those two, lo two uh, points, which is also why, again, Bezier curves are not your friend when you want to curve. So to create my, my sleeve and sew it into place, I'm going to sew past that, that whole uh, center, center segment point and click once. This is all left click. So I have that, that line created, and I need to sew these two separate pieces in here. To do that, I'm going to start my sewing, just clicking once. Also, uh, I'm gonna do this again, but I'm gonna explain this. So how I've placed it is specific to what I want it to do. So this is gonna be the front. So this is the front. We can see here in my 2D window, this is the front. This is the front pattern. This is the back pattern. And then this is the back sleeve of the pattern. So I'm making sure in that I'm going to be sewing in the correct direction that I'm, I'm starting this in. So I always do it from left to right. But if you want to do it from right to left, you can. But we're going to go left to right. So free sewing. Again, M hotkey. Start the sewing, again, from front to back. Sometimes if you want to say it for your, to yourself, you can. Front to back. Starting from the front. Oh, but look, I can't go past this. If you hold shift, your line will change color. This will, this is a, uh, it's not in the list of sewing. It's part of the, uh, all of these tools. This is uh, what we call a uh, one to N sewing. So we have M to N, which is multiple lines to multiple lines. If you hold shift with your one sewing relationship tool, you can sew one line to a whole bunch of other lines. This also applies to the segment sewing tool, but we're doing this with the free sewing tool. So once you get to the end of the sleeve, click once, hold shift. If you let go of shift, I'm gonna show you what happens. I'm going to let go of shift now. All of that will sew into that line. So when you let go of shift, it deletes uh, it, it completes the sewing. So I'm going to start this again. Do that. Start my sewing from the same direction, holding shift. Still holding shift. I'm going to go over here to the back and continue that sewing line. And then once you're done, then you let go. It's not going to be perfect. That's okay. The sleeve is actually too big for his armhole. That's fine. 
then once you're done with that segment, sew the underarm to each other. So those side up and down pieces, sew them together. Oh, I, hold on, I forgot. Everybody, don't simulate this. Um, I forgot a step, so I'm gonna show you what I forgot. So, actually this is a good example of, of uh, what not to do. I always make one mistake during these. Um, so you can see here that it's actually sewing it to the back piece over here because it's symmetrically linked. So we made this, but I forgot. We have, we have two arms, right? So control Z until your sewing is gone. If we simulate that, it's gonna cause us a problem. So it's symmetrically linked, but we need another half. So here's what we can all do. For those of us who actually are symmetrically linked, for those of us who actually had the unfold, uh, you're, you don't have to do this. So select your pattern. We're actually going to remove the linked editing. So now it's a standalone pattern. Because now we, do, we have one on the left, we need one on the right. This time, for those of us who have it, for those of us who don't, We've, we've discussed this enough times. Copy paste or choose symmetrical pattern with sewing. So this time, instead of across that center line, we're creating two linked pattern pieces. If you're lucky, it'll place it around the same mirrored, uh, mirrored arrangement point. Now we'll do that sewing. So same thing again. I'm sorry I left it on there. So... This is now a standalone pattern. It doesn't have that line down the center because now it won't be symmetrically linked across the center of this pattern, trying to link it across to the front and the back at the same time. Again, using the free sewing, holding shift, clicking, and then letting go of shift when you're done. Now, now it's right. So because we have the two, and these are symmetrically linked across the center of each pattern. And these are symmetrically linked. It actually does all the sewing for me on the other half as well. But like you saw, I forgot to make a second sleeve. Because of that, these pieces, um, like I didn't have that. So your pattern should look like this right now. And now you can sew the segments together on the underarm. So once it looks like this, uh, you can check your sewing. I'm gonna wait for a little bit while you guys are all doing this. I will not be repeating this a second time because this is actually gonna go longer than uh, intended, but that's okay. Once you have done your pattern, making sure that there's no crisscrossing, don't do this. I'm gonna show you what it looks like if you've made a mistake. So if it looks like this, uh, you want to either try to reverse your sewing or redo it. So I'm just reversing my sewing back, making sure that as it's placed, it is sewing into that armhole and there's no crossing. Blender. Yeah, I don't, I don't know Blender very well. I'm sorry. Um, soon I'll be able to work on Blender and help uh, answer those questions, but I don't, I'm not going to be able to answer any Blender questions today. So once it looks like this, enough, because we're, we're almost done, guys. Once it looks like this, then we get to simulate again, and it's going to be great. I'm going to turn on monochrome surface just so it looks nice for everybody. So once it looks like this, uh, any thing close to it, and there's no, no crossing of the sleeves. Make sure you have two sleeves. They're not symmetrically linked down the center. Now we can go ahead and simulate. So hit the space bar, or you can use uh, this button. Whenever you use the drop down option, it's selecting it. It's not going to simulate it. So either just hit it once or hit the drop down button. I'll just hit it. Uh, I'll just hit it. I'll click the button here, and my sleeves will go into place. Now they're pr they're too big. They're very very large, and that's okay. We can see here, sleeves are too big. Most of the time, sleeves don't look like this. 
most of the time sleeves are going to be tapered and, and we're going to do that. We're going to fix it. And we can see here there's some wrinkles. That's okay. Once you've got some form of a sleeve in here, we can, we can get started. Because this is also going to show us uh, what else we need to do. So sleeves aren't always the same size as the armhole. In fact, they're normally bigger. But we can get away with it being the same size too. That's fine. So, first of all, let I'm going to make these sleeves, the under portion of these sleeves, smaller. So, if you're wondering why, um, you can play around with it by grabbing it with, with your mouse. And if you just make it narrower, it's going to fit around his arm better. His arm is very narrow, but the joint is the largest part. So, we're just going to taper this. So using the edit pattern tool, I'm going to, I'm gonna, I'm like, how do I want to do this for you? Well, okay, let me see. Uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to go about this. It's fastest. How big is this? This is too, this is too large. So let's go with the size first. Mine is too big. If I look at this, uh, we can see here, it's, it's definitely too big. That's a uh, 32.7 millimeters is uh, about an inch too big. And I don't really want that, especially not in the shape it's in. So I'm going to use the A hotkey or the transform pattern tool. And I'm just going to make it narrower because we have the sewing relationship there. I'm just going to make it narrower. Just grab the side, move it in. It doesn't affect the sewing relationship in any way. It makes it smaller, but it's not gonna make it too different. And then I'm gonna be using the space bar a lot here, simulate it to see what how the changes look. It's looking better. Using the B hotkey to uh, the edit pattern, to edit sewing tool to check my sewing relationship. I will fix this top point, that's okay. We're gonna be fiddling with this because this piece is gonna need to be bigger as well. Because this is the cap of the sleeve. So the reason that it's shape, it's looking like this is that this sleeve cap isn't fitting him correctly. This sleeve cap is too small and too wide. So what I need to do is increase the height of this sleeve cap. And we're going to see this. We're going to do this together is make this taller so that this will come down because I'm increasing the height and then make this part narrower because this is this is too big on the front and making it taller will will fix both of those so let's make it taller before we taper any of this so grabbing that center point I'm just gonna hold shift and move it upward so before I simulate this is what I mean by increasing its height, this is now going to do something like this. This one might be too tall, but that's okay. We're all kind of fiddling around with our patterns. It's, it is too tall, that's okay. But we're just increasing the height. And also because of that, we do need to decrease the width because we can see here, it's in the red again. It's gone back up to 30 millimeters because it's the, it's the length of that curve. So I'm making it narrower again. And we can see here, it's getting closer already to fitting his arm a bit better. Uh, but the sleeve cap is looking pretty good. In this case, uh, the back and the front, I'm gonna leave them to be the same shape. Uh, but I do want this to be more severe. Um, in real life, I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna be honest, everybody. In real life, this is a different shape than this, and then this one, the left, the front, and the back patterns of a sleeve also have corresponding different shapes to the front and the back. We're not doing dealing with that today, and it's okay. Most t-shirts, because this is going to be a t-shirt block. Most shirts like this have uh, the front and the back of the sleeve being the exact same shape because they're stretchy and they're knit. And that's what we're going to be making today, or this month anyway.
So this is great and easy to learn with. You don't have to worry about too much of specificity. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and make this shape a little different using the edit curve tool or the curve point tool. Now, the one thing is these are not symmetrically linked across that center line anymore. So just kind of keep that in mind while you're doing it. You can use the curve point tool, curve tool. I'm gonna go ahead and delete uh, on, the same, on the same side. I'm gonna delete these four. I need to make this slope more severe. So I'm deleting those, holding shift to do multiple. It's not much, but that's okay. The fewer points you have to deal with, the better. I'm deleting another four. We can see here what changes are getting made. And I'm just gonna do one on each side. I'm gonna manually adjust this. It's not perfect, that's okay. It looks weird, that's fine. Just adjust it until you like how it looks. I'm control Z and going back, cleaning it up. Um, I'm just messing around with mine. Now my sleeves here are still those bell sleeves uh, and I, I wanna see how this looks like without that bell shape. So we are gonna taper this, this portion now, like I said earlier. To do that, we are just gonna be taking away, oh, let me look at the correct sleeve. We're gonna be taking away the volume at the bottom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this point and taper it inward. This will become a long sleeve shirt, so it's fine if it's not too crazy. Um, I'm looking underneath this and I'm just gonna do the same on the bottom. Uh, so you can eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect or you can be a perfectionist about it. Grab that point, hold shift, right click, and you can be very specific. Uh, so we can do, we'll just do 20 millimeters removed. And then same thing on this side, 20 millimeters. And now we have uh, it smaller, so simulate, and then you can kind of check your sleeve size. I'm gonna make it a little bit more. I'm also just watching the numbers here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do 30 for each one. It really depends on how your piece is fitting. So total 30, I'm doing another 10. There we go, looking a little bit better. So now using the edit pattern tool, I'm deleting that center line for now, or that center point because I'm going to make this, we're gonna make this a long sleeve shirt. So take that line, grab it, and hold shift again. And you can pull it down. Now, don't simulate yet. You can if you want, it's gonna be give you a little bit of a problem. We're gonna use the arrangement points again and just place it on the arrangement points. Mine's a little long as you can see, it's gonna collide with his hand. Shorter is gonna be better for us in this case. Once it's it's on your avatar, because we're, we're almost there, guys. Once it's on your avatar, just like this, we've done this uh, before. I'm gonna turn off my arrangement points and I'm gonna simulate again with the space bar. All right. So it's still too wide at his uh, sleeve cuff here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and narrow it down. If I really want, there's one more way to narrow this, which is why I'm doing it in all different ways. You can do whichever way you prefer. You can also select this line, right click, and choose change length. So with change length, you have your length, full line, and you have your direction. You can choose uh, starting, ending, or both. So I'm gonna be choosing both. You can also just do this manually. And my length is still too wide. So 384, uh, let's try, honestly, 30. We're gonna do, I'm gonna do 300. This is actually gonna be pretty tapered. Uh, it's sleeves are more tapered than you expect them to be. Okay. And then I'm hitting simulate or the space bar one last time. And now we're, we're almost there. So it does look like 
It's still pretty wide on his arm. So we can fix that by bringing these ones in again, these uh, side underarm points. So using the B hotkey or the edit sewing tool, we can just kind of check our sewing again. It's 19. So if I really want, I can make these adjustments to make this more narrow. So again, we're all just kind of fiddling around right now. I can just narrow these pieces. I'll, I'm gonna do that again, just so you guys aren't confused. I can just grab each one and make it narrower. Or like we did before, we can just make this, uh, you can make this more narrow uh, horizontally, but do keep in mind that you're making your arm hole uh, on the, the cuff smaller. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move this in like a little bit more, 12. I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it. It honestly doesn't have to be too perfect. 12.4, 12.4. And then simulate. It's not looking bad. My cap, my sleeve cap looks still pretty good. Still going around, let me click this. Still going around him. If you really want to make this sleeve cap taller, you can. Same thing, just grabbing this point, moving it upward. Again, it's gonna push it down. So if your sleeve cap is too tall, it's gonna look like this and you're gonna have that little bump there. You can grab that, you can grab the edge and kind of pull it taut to figure out where there's extra volume. So I've turned off simulation when I just did that and I can see that it's still too tall. So I'm hitting Control Z and simulating again, and like this looks nice. I'm gonna stick with that. So the last thing for our basic t-shirt block is under the sleeve. I've said this before, and we are gonna apply it here as well. We want these to be a nice flowing kind of square 90 degree angle. So we're just gonna apply a curve point to the center. And we just wanna make this a nice smooth curve because that, uh, that fixes up this line on the underarm here, fixes up that line, makes it nice and smooth. You don't have to do this, I'm just showing you this because we're here at the end. The reason why we do this is so I'm just putting the two sleeves next to each other so we can see the shape of the line that it creates. So the reason we we added that curve is so that this sleeve is now a nice a nice curve and it sews into itself. I'm gonna control Z. This is just showing you the example of why we do the things we're doing. So here's my sleeve. I've made sure that my sleeve cap is not too big. If you really want, we can make this armhole more narrow. Z hotkey, and I can grab it. If you also wanna be more specific, you can select that. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing this. You can select your segment point and use the arrow keys to go left and right. So if you really want this to be more narrow, I've done one on the left and one on the right to make it more narrow. And I've just made my sleeve more narrow. So it depends on your preference. I might even make this lower. So if you don't like how your sleeve is fitting, again, adjust your sleeve cap by just grabbing it. I am still simulating. We're grabbing the sleeve and kind of pulling at it to see how it's looking. You can use math, but we're it's, this is easier for, for some people. So we can just kind of eyeball it, you know, check our, make sure our work looks good. Make sure these points don't cut down into each other. And you can just kind of check this. Um, we might, we'll probably do that in the future, but right now we are just doing very basic, basic tutorials. This is for beginners. So all, all September is beginner month. So we have made a basic t-shirt block.
If yours is too, if your hem is too long, by the way, uh, I'm going to do this again. Select that bottom hem on both holding shift and then grab it and move it upward. So if your, if your hem's too small or too long, you can just grab it and pull it up and down. So we have our basic knit block. So for this whole stream, we'll be making, uh, you've seen the photo, you're gonna be making that. So this is a bit easier for people to be working with and you don't have to worry about being absolutely perfect. But here's our basic. Our basic pattern. So we are done. Um, this is exactly two. We're done. If you uh, are having trouble with some of these, jump in the Discord and share what's going on with your pattern. And we can always uh, help each other there. For example, if this is if this is too deep, let's just say, like that, you're gonna get uh, fewer wrinkles. But sometimes, if it's too wide out this way, you're gonna get more wrinkles. You can see these wrinkles here. And in Marvelous Designer, it's great because it's like real life. It's like real life pattern making you can check the wrinkles and the wrinkles will tell you everything. So don't do what I did, but we all have a shirt now. I'm going to go back and it's okay if it's not exactly the same as mine. It's okay, but we all have a shirt and we're going to use this in the next stream. So everybody here and those of you in the future who want to watch this, this will be used for the next stream. So let me, I think I have my Discord link again. Um, just for the sake of ease, I'm going to give the Discord link because we will have one asset that you kind of all need next week or not next week, the week after next. So let me zoom out and like we're done. We've made a shirt. It's wonderful. Good job, everybody. So I hope you're all here with me. We've, we've made a bit, we've made our shirt. We've made our shirt. Good job. Thank you guys for following along. So don't leave yet. Um, let me go to the, let me go to that stream real fast. Um, we, for the next stream, you can, you can do this yourself. Do we have to delete history? You don't have to, you can, if you want to delete your save history. Oh yeah, actually save this. <laughs> I always forget and I just save your project. <laughs> save project, save this as... I'm going to save it on the desktop. I have patterns stuff here, but save this. Save this as your stream stream t-shirt block. S-T-R-E stream shirt block. Save it. Save your pattern. You can save it as a project. You can save it as garment. So file. Click before I forget. I throw everything away. Come here. Eh. I've got three screens, it doesn't like it. Okay, file, save as. You can do project or you can do garment. I recommend project. Do project, save it to project, save your project. We're gonna be using this next time. Also, for those of you who are coming back next time, either download the, uh, the image, uh, like the logo asset that we will use next stream or pick a logo asset of your own. Um, so link to the discord channel. In fact, I'm actually going to grab the link to that server or to that, that specific group. Uh, no. No expiration date. Generate new link. Copy. Okay. Here is an exact link to the Discord, but also specifically that Discord channel for the beginner stream. 
Um, yes. So for those of you who are new to Discord, you need to read the rules because inside of the rules are special instructions to actually get you through the rest of the filtering process to make sure you're a real person and that you read the rules. So make sure to read the rules. Otherwise, you won't be able to get through the Discord uh, because uh, that's just how it is nowadays. Uh, read the rules. There's little secrets inside the rules that tell you how to finish uh, joining the Discord server. In the Discord server, we do have the links. Otherwise, prepare for yourself. If you don't already have one, prepare a, uh, a PNG file or an image file that you want to use as like a logo graphic because that's what we're going to be doing on the next stream. Does anyone have any questions about what we've done today? Because I kind of don't want to do it a second time. Um, for those of you who are new to all of this, you did, you, you got to read the other one because in the rules, it says to read the other channel. You have access to three channels. Also, for those of you who are new, who are like new to these tutorials and have never done them before, um, here is a link to like a survey if you want to see like what kind of tutorials. David, I hope it just posted it twice. If you read the rules, it'll tell you exactly what to do. You got to read the rules, then you got to go to the readme. My Discord group is working. Got to go to the readme and then you got to follow the instructions there. There's instructions to get in the server. I just tested it this morning. <laughs> Notice. You should see rules read me first and an announcement. Uh, rules read me first and self rolls. Uh, if you also have made a bread, for those of you who are new to un understanding what Discord is, depending on the Discord. Uh, server they can have different uh kind of rules if you've just like if you've just made ju just now made a discord account your uh like you need to like exist for five minutes your account needs to be at least five minutes old um uh, before you can kind of comment so just so you guys know um but for those of you who are trying to join the discord channel link is here for the Discord channel, not for specifically that notice channel. Um, join the Discord server there. Otherwise, we're still going to be sharing the assets, but that is where you can actually like kind of talk, get a little bit of help on the stream, whichever you want. Speaking of, I've already pinned all of those assets, but we did finish our shirt today. Next stream. Um, I'm not saying you're new, David. I'm saying if in case other people are new, but um, follow the instructions or you can always, I guess, DM the mod. I should be accessible as messaging. Um, Cause I'm the moderator for the, for the server. I'm the active one at least. So read all the rules and then make sure you read the read me first uh, instructions. If you can't, you can always message us on Twitter and then share the photos, David, or message us in Discord. But if anyone has any questions involving the shirt right now, I'm probably going to end the stream now uh, because I, I did say I was going to do it twice, but I mean, I can do it a second time if anyone has questions, but I would go fast, so... It's up to you guys. But next time, save this asset and then prepare a PNG. Either get the PNG from us, which we will make available, not just on Discord, but we'll make it available on the, the post. Um, Because I'm going to open up, actually, right now. Since we're here, I'm going to open up the upcoming events publicly. And I will put the link in there. Edits. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. The name isn't the name isn't perfect. 
Perfect. David, finish reading all of the rules and the read me first. There are there's instructions in both of them on how to finish getting past the, the instruction wall. Yeah, David, there's there's more instructions that you did not read that are in rules and read me first to get you through to the actual rest of the discussion. Uh, that's why you can't see it because you haven't followed the rest of the instructions yet. Uh, save, uh, make public. All right. I have just now made you got, I got last, but I've caught up. Yay. You've caught up. I've just now made the next stream available like publicly right now. So for you guys to save and remember link for, I don't remember the video I'm talking, you're talking about moral. Um, David, I'm going to delete that. Yeah, David, I told you to read the rules. It's in the rules. I'm going to be honest. If you guys aren't reading my rules, I'm going to kick you. You need to read the rules because in the rules are the instructions. Uh, and that also tells me that you didn't read the rules if you don't aren't following the instructions that are hidden in the middle of the rules. So heads up. I'm nice, but you got to meet me halfway. So read my rules. It's not bad. The video said where we can put our made clothes. Oh, I don't have the link. Just type literally Moral City. Just type in Marvelous Designer Fit Suit. Um, David, they're intentionally confusing to people who don't read the rules. Um, and that's why they're hidden like that, because they make people read the rules. Um, it's, it's literally a thing that most servers do, where if you're not reading the rules, you can't figure out how to finish, how to get into the server. And if you don't read the rules, like you say you agree to do, then why would you get in the server if you're not reading my rules? Like that, that's just why it's, that's why it's that way. It's to make sure people read the rules. Um, so yeah, so I'm losing my voice. I haven't had anything. I haven't had anything to drink today, but we're going to end the stream. If you have any other questions involving what we just did today, feel free to ask, um, on Twitter, on discord, read my rules on discord, follow the instructions and you'll be golden. Um, but if you're having trouble, you can always do Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. You can just, you can tag us. Just make sure it's actually a text, a text, something that you're tagging us in. Um, cause I'll probably see all of those at least. So all the options as well as I've made the video available for the next stream. It already has that PNG link in it. And if you have more questions about, um, our tutorials. I've also above, if you scroll a little bit, I have linked a little survey if you want to fill a survey out. But thank you guys for joining us. I will see you next time.